All right, so here's a tutorial video. Uh, and my goal in this video is just to teach you what it means for a relation to be reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And the reason I'm doing this is because I made a similar video for students in one of my classes, I'm a teacher, um, showing solutions to an assignment that I gave them that dealt with these things. And for whatever reason, a bunch of people watch that video, not that I care about that. Um, and they start complaining like, hey, this didn't teach me it at all. I don't get this at all. This is super confusing. It's like, all right, I wasn't trying to teach you anything. I was just giving solutions to my class. But enough people complained that I figured, all right, I'll make a little tutorial video and kind of explain this stuff to people because it seems like some people struggle with this. So what I'm going to assume is that you have kind of the basic idea in that these three uh, properties here, the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties, are talking about, um, they're describing what's called a relation. And all a relation is is the way you can think about it is there's a bunch of arrows in between two sets. So I have one set, set A over here, which is this circle, and another set, set B over here, and these sets have elements in them. So to keep it very arbitrary, maybe I'll call the elements over here A, B, C, and D, and I can call the elements over here whatever the hell I want. They can be the same as these or different from these. Generally speaking, they don't have to be the same, but typically when you're talking about reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, um, you're talking about a relation on a set, which means that this set and this set are the same. So that's what I'm going to do for this example, A, B, C, and D. Um, this set where my arrows that I'm going to draw in a minute start um, is what's called the domain. And this set where they finish is called the codomain. And the subset of these elements that get hit with arrows is called the range. But I'm not going to focus on that too much. I'm going to assume you know all that. Um, you have a relation, which is a bunch of different arrows in between these guys. And presumably what you are asked is to figure out is your relation reflexive? Is it symmetric and is it transitive? And I think this makes more sense when it's a little bit more concrete, when these are like real numbers or something instead of just these arbitrary letters. Um, but typically the way it's taught is you start out all abstract like this where these can be whatever the hell you want them to be. So I'll start out that way and at the end of this video I'll give some more concrete examples. So the first property that a relation, and again a relation is just the arrows in between these two sets, can have is called the reflexive property. And it's the easiest of the three. It's the most simple. All it says is that for any element in your set, so again, the set is the circle and the elements are A, B, C, and D in this example. In this example, I have four elements. For any of those four elements, there must be an arrow from that element to itself. So for any of the four letters, A, B, C, or D, there must be an arrow from A to A, from B to B from C to C, from D to D. So what I'm saying is if I want this relation to be reflexive, I gotta have something like this. It's not just that, I could have more arrows. I could throw an arrow, I don't know, over here from A to C maybe, and then one from C down to D, sure. And I don't know, uh, let's go D back to C, sure. There's enough arrows that that looks confusing. This relation is absolutely reflexive. Why is it reflexive? Because there's an arrow from A to A, B to B, C to C, and D to D. This is reflexive. Um, what would a relation that's not reflexive look like? Sure, uh, let's do another one. Let's stick with A, B, C, and D, because why not? Although it doesn't have to be A, B, C, and D. There's my domain, there's my codomain. Uh, maybe I have an arrow from A to A. You're like, oh, that's good. If it's reflexive, I need an arrow from A to A. That's true. And B to B, that's good news. And C to C. But that's it. This is not reflexive. Why is it not reflexive? Because it's kind of an all or nothing thing. To be reflexive for all of the elements, there must be an arrow from that element to itself. Three out of four isn't good enough. It has to happen for all of the elements. So maybe I have an arrow, I don't know, from D up to B and B up to A. Sure. Whatever, you can throw in extra arrows if you want. If there's not an arrow from D to D, this would be not reflexive. Not reflexive because there is no arrow from D to D, which you can write like this, because there is not an arrow from D to D, if you want. So reflexive just means an arrow from every element to itself. Easy enough. What about the next one? What about symmetric? Well, symmetric's a little bit different. The idea with symmetric is if you have an arrow from somewhere to somewhere else, from A to B, for example, or from C to D, for example, or even from C to C. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you have an arrow from, let's say, A to B, then there must be another arrow from B to A. 
So for reflexive, you can kind of think about it. There must be an arrow to self, an arrow to the same element for all of the elements. Down here, you kind of need an arrow back. What I'm talking about is up here, I have an arrow from A to C, but I do not have an arrow from C back up to A. So this would be not symmetric. And you're like, wait a minute, there's an arrow from D to C, and there's also an arrow from C to D. That sounds pretty damn symmetric. Yeah, that's true. But again, it's an all or nothing thing. It must be true that for every single arrow, you have this kind of arrow back, this partner arrow. Um, so if there's an arrow from D to C, there must be an arrow from C to D. There is, but there's also an arrow from A to C, and there's not an arrow from C to A. So this is not symmetric, and maybe I'll write because there is not an arrow from, or how about this, because there is an arrow from A to C, but there's not an arrow from C to A. So it's not symmetric. What about this one? This thing reflexive, or sorry, symmetric, or is it not symmetric? Think about that for a minute. It's not symmetric. It's not even close. There's an arrow from B to A, and there's not an arrow from A to B, for example. Or there's an arrow from D to B, but there is not an arrow from B to D. So this one is also not symmetric, and I'm not even going to bother writing why, because there's lots of reasons why. One thing that confuses people, I say for every arrow, there must be an arrow back. What about this arrow from B to B? Well, technically this says if B comma B, then B comma B, right? If there's an arrow from B to B, there must be an arrow from B to B. Well, it's kind of has to be there. If there, you already had an arrow from B to B, then you have an arrow from B to B. So arrows to themselves, arrows from an element to that same element cannot possibly break symmetry. What could break symmetry is if you have an arrow from one element to a different element, like A to C, for example, but you do not have an arrow from that second element back to the first element from C to A. To be clear, the fact that there is no arrow from D to D here is totally fine. That does not break the symmetric property. That breaks the reflexive property, but not the symmetric property. The reason this relation is not symmetric is because, for example, there's an arrow from D to B, but not from B to D. So there's our first two properties, um, the reflexive property and the symmetric property, which you can think of as arrows to self and arrows back. The hardest of these properties, the one we haven't talked about yet, is the transitive property. And this is the one that messes people up all the time. It's, it's kind of the shortcut property. And what's going on here is if you have two different arrows, then you must have a third arrow. If you have an arrow from X to Y and from Y to Z for some X's and Y's, then you must have an arrow from X to Z. So what this is saying is if I have an arrow that starts somewhere and ends up somewhere else, and then a second arrow that starts where that first arrow ended and ends somewhere else, then there must be a third arrow that starts where the first one started and ends where the second one ends. Wow, that's confusing. Let me give you some examples. Uh, this relation right here, I have an arrow from A to C. So for transitive, I'm gonna, maybe I'll leave it up here. There is an arrow from A to C. I think it helps to write these a little bit differently. There's an arrow from A to C, right? That's this arrow right here. And there's also an arrow from C to D. So note that second arrow started where the first one ended. So I have this chain of events, A to C and C to D. A to C and C to D. If that's the case, then there must be an arrow from A to D. There's a shortcut. Kind of think about it if you started here and you walked here, stopped, ate lunch, picked up and walked again and ended up here. There must be a shortcut from where you started to where you ended. Is there? No. There's no arrow from A to D. This thing is not transitive. I don't know why that's also blue. What are you going to do? Why is it not transitive? Arrow from A to C. Right, this one went from A to C. And I have an arrow from C to D. But I do not have an arrow from A to D. Uh, that's, the tran whoop. that's the transitive property. It's by far the hardest one to wrap your head around. Maybe look at this for a minute and decide whether this is transitive or not. It's not. Hint. Why is it not transitive? I want you to think about it for a second. 
If you said that there's an arrow from D to B and from B to A, but none from D to A, so if you want, I don't know if this is any standard notation, but this helps me. Maybe there's an arrow from D to B and an arrow from B to A, but there is not, which is what this little slash mark means, an arrow from D to A. I guess if I'm using that notation, I should put a slash mark there. So this thing's not transitive. This relation here is not transitive. Um, let me see if I can come up with the relation that is trans. Or let me give you some examples. Let's stick with the A, B, C, D thing. And I'll let you think about whether it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, and or. So let's start by throwing in some arrows. I'll change colors. Um, I think it's nice. These arrow diagrams, I think, are easier to look at. But instead of listing the arrows, you can list them in ordered pairs like they do here. Just FYI. Suppose I have an arrow from A to A, and from B to B, and from, I don't know, D to D, and an arrow from D to B, and from B to A, and from D to A, and from A to B. Wow, what a mess. And you're asking yourself the question, is this reflexive, is this symmetric, is this transitive? Three different questions, and they get progressively harder. First one, is this reflexive? Yes or no? No. And you're like, wait, reflexive, that's the one where you just need arrows to themselves. So I got an arrow from A to A, doesn't that make it reflexive? No. You need arrows from every element to itself to be reflexive. It's not enough to have it for three of the four elements, you need it for all four elements. This is not reflexive. Why? Because there's no element from C to C. So you're like, oh, it's kind of reflexive. It's three quarters reflexive. It's almost reflexive. That means it's not reflexive. It's like these properties are like being pregnant. You can't be half pregnant. Either you are or you're not. Similar on reflexive. Either you are or you're not. We need an arrow from every element to itself to be reflexive. That doesn't happen, so it's not reflexive. What about symmetric? You're like, well, there's an arrow from A to B and one back from B to A. That's a really good sign. Yeah, but that's not enough to make it symmetric. To be symmetric, every single arrow needs its partner arrow. A to A's partner arrow is A to A, so that's fine. A to B's partner, partner arrow is B to A, that's fine. B to B's partner is B to B, that's fine. D to A needs a partner arrow from A to D. It doesn't have it. It's not symmetric. Again, it kind of looks like it's sort of symmetric. It's symmetric for a lot of cases, right, but it's an all or nothing thing. It's not symmetric because one example is I have an arrow from D to A, but I don't have an arrow from A to D. Right? D to A, but not from A to D. You also could have said there's an arrow from D to B, but not an arrow from B to D. Sure, why not? Either way, you conclude that this thing is not symmetric. What about transitive? Transitive, again, that's the hard one. And the idea, I think, for what it's worth, I think the easiest way to figure out if something is transitive or not is it is transitive if it is not not transitive. In other words, can you find a counterexample? It only takes one. Can you find one counterexample? Can you find one kind of chain of length two that does not have a shortcut? If you can find just one counterexample, then it's not transitive. If you cannot find a counterexample, that is, if it's not not transitive, then it's transitive. And I know that sounds really weird with double negatives and stuff, but I'm telling you that's the easiest way to think about this. So uh, if I were checking this out, let's see, I got an arrow from A to B, and then where can I leave B and go to? Well, I could go to B, but that doesn't really get me anywhere. I could go back to A. So because there's an arrow from A to B and an arrow from B to A, there better be a shortcut arrow from A to A. Oh, there is. Good. I got to save there. That does not mean it's transitive. I just have not yet proved that it's not transitive. Uh, what if I start at B? Well, there's an arrow from B to A. All right, that's this guy. And where can I go from A? Well, I can go back down to B. Oh, that means there better be an arrow from B to B. Oh, there is again. Okay, cool. It doesn't mean it's transitive, you just have not yet shown it's not transitive. Uh, what if I start at D down here? If I start at D, I could go all the way up to A, for example. And then if I'm at A, I can go to A. The reason I'm not putting A to A, like there's no point doing this, right? 
I don't need to write this because if I just go from A to A here, then the fact that there's an arrow from D to this A means there must be an arrow from D to this A. So there's no way you're going to break transitivity by using a relation from an arrow to itself. Right, so you don't even bother that. You start at D, you go to A, and then you look at A and you're like, where other than to A can I go? Well, I can go to B. So I get here. And then I ask myself the question, is there a shortcut from D to B? Well, there is. So far, I'm good. Where else could I have gone from D? Well, I could go to D, but as I just explained, there's no way to break transitivity by going from an element to itself. So I already did A, I guess I could go to B. If I am at B, where can I go? Well, I can go up to A. There better be a shortcut from D to A. There it is. All right, that's this arrow right here. I think I've gone through and I've exhausted all of the possibili possibilities. So this is transitive. It's not reflexive, it's not symmetric, but it is transitive. Uh, that's all of the kind of vague, general, abstract ideas that I'm going to show you. Uh, but I think what might make more sense is to get into some concrete examples. Uh, how am I doing on time here? It's already 15 minutes. I'm going to stop this video, and then I'm going to make another video doing a couple concrete examples, and I'm going to call this good.